I'm afraid all the questions that have been given cannot all cannot be answered because there are too many of them. And I hope you don't mind if your particular question is not answered. Out of the collection, we've chosen some of these. And we'll, we'll go into them. What is one's approach to a question? If all these questions were given to you, how would you answer them? What would be your approach? How you would listen to the question? And what is the response to that question? Is it the answer? or the question itself. How would you deal with a question? Which is, you talk about the ill effects of conditioning. The many philosophers, psychologists, philosophers and so on, say that only through proper conditioning can man think and act clearly, what's your answer? I'll read it again. You talk about ill effects of conditioning. Yet many psychologists, philosophers and so on, say that only through proper conditioning <coughs> can man think and act clearly, what's your answer? Yeah, how would you answer that question? It was put to you, <coughs> and you must have thought about it. How would you respond to that? What would be your approach to it? How do you listen to a question of this kind? Do you, after having read many, perhaps some philosophers and psychologists and books and all that kind of thing, <coughs> are ready to respond from your collected memory and answer that question? Or, putting aside what others have said, how would you answer? First, isn't it obvious, I think it is, that all human beings throughout the world, after so many millions of years, are conditioned. That's a fact. They are conditioned by the religions, by establishments of governments, by the economic con condition, climate, food, clothes, by their family, by their education, and so on. They were all human beings, right through the world, are conditioned. One, that's an obvious, acceptable, reasonable fact. And there are those philosophers and psychologists say that you must accept this conditioning. You've heard about that too. And they assert, some of them, that the conditioning can never be changed. Human condition can never be transformed. There can never be a mutation from this conditioning. And so, make the best of it. And if you are a clever writer and have the gift of the tongue, you enlarge that and you become 
famous, and we poor laymen accept the people who are clever, erudite, and go on with their assertions. But if you can, if one can put all that aside and look at ourselves, how do we deal with this fact, which is that we are all conditioned? If you live in India, you are conditioned in a particular way religion, superstition, ignorance, poverty, the climate, the food the lack of space, overpopulation, and as you come along east, west, same phenomenon is going on. The Christians are conditioned 2,000 years, after 2,000 years, by their society, their culture, and so on. Philosophers and psychologists, apparently, do not investigate themselves. They have theories, they have experimented on pigeons, animals, and from that they come to certain conclusions. But they never say, look, I am conditioned. My condition is my religion, my society, my family, my name, the tradition, and see if I cannot possibly undo all that and discover if it is at all possible to free the mind from this condition. Right? Now, can we do that together now? You understand? My, am I making my this figure is making itself clear? We are conditioned to live in America. We are conditioned by affluent society, by this enormous drive for pleasure, entertainment, and the fanciful religion and romantic East with their gurus and all that stuff. We are unfortunately conditioned. Now can we discover, become aware of this condition? I am conditioned. Suppose, born in India, with all the nonsense that goes on around religion, and they are very, very orthodox at the time the speaker was born, tremendously so-called religious, certain Abrahamic class with their tradition, and so on. Now, if one is aware of that, can one actually Free oneself from all that heavy, from two, three, five thousand years of so called civilization. That's the problem the questioner asks. Can I? The questioner says, Can I? Be free from all this. Who is, who is speaking the truth? The philosophers, the psychologists, the people who assert that you cannot possibly change the conditioning of man. Human never, human nature can be modified, but can never radically be transformed. If you accept that, which is very convenient and happy, you can trot along for the rest of your life, living in a small circle of conditioning, and say that is inevitable. 
But if one goes into it much more deeply, if one is want, want to find out what the conditioning is and whether it's possible to really very deeply at the very root of this conditioning be free of all that. That's the question. Now, how does one set about it? I see I'm conditioned. What do we mean by that word conditioning? The, the brain, being very, very pliable, subtle, has an extraordinary capacity to absorb, hold, confine itself to a certain limitation, feeling that it is safe in that limitation, which is really the conditioning. I hope you are following. Am I going too fast? And it feels safe in that condition, secure, protected, and it is unwilling to let go and look, unwilling because of the long habit, the long many thousand years of being confined, limited to a particular experience, knowledge and all the rest of it, so it is, feels completely secure in that condition. And it accepts what the psychologists, the philosophers, the other people say, live with it, be happy in it, make the best of it, better bathrooms, better relationship, always little better, little more convenient. And all the psychologists help us to be little more happy, a little more adjustable, a little more uh, accepting what is, what is this condition involves. Now if one says, I really want to find out, not what the psychologists are saying, but I really want to find out if this condition can ever be resolved. First, what what are the results of this conditioning? What happens to a mind or to a brain that is conditioned? Before you can say I will be free of conditioning. Please, are we meeting each other? Shall we go on with this? You are doing it yourself now, I am not doing it for myself. This is not group analysis or group therapy, all that kind of nonsense, but we are trying to find out whether it's possible to free the brain from its heavy conditioning. When one is conditioned, when the brain is conditioned, Either it, that conditioning, brings various forms of conflict. Right? I'm conditioned as a Hindu, suppose, or a Catholic, or a Protestant, or a whatever it is. Naturally, the brain, being so conditioned, becomes atrophied, right? And we follow each other. Have you noticed if you keep on repeating that you are Christian, that you must behave this way, that you must be like that, 
that there is only one saviour and so on, so on, so on. This very repetition, this constant acceptance of something unreal, which has no factual actuality, then the brain must inevitably become more and more atrophied. Right? It's so obvious, you can see them all. When you are constantly repeating, I am a British, you know, <laughs> or I am Catholic, I am this, I am that, then naturally, brain will inevitably become mechanical, will inevitably become narrow, and gradually wither, become atrophied. That's what's going on, right? That's one of the results of conditioning. There are many other factors of this condition, which is separation, division. Where there is division, there must be conflict. We are, right? I, please, we are examining ourselves, looking at our conditioning, and investigating that conditioning. The speaker is not investigating, but you are doing the investigation, only I am verbalizing it. Right? Let's be clear on that point. You are not listening to the speaker and so accepting what he is saying, but you are actually looking at your own condition, if you are aware of it, if you want to go into it. If not, it's all right. But if you are inquiring into it, you can observe the results and the consequences of this conditioning. Then, the next question is, is it possible to be free of all this? Why? Why should one be free of it? Because in that, the very examination and the reason, sanity, points out, one cannot live constantly in a narrow little groove. Which emphasizes naturally the egotistic, egocentric activity. Right? So, what is one to do? I am conditioned, if I am, and I realize the consequences of it. Then, is it possible to be free of all that conditioning? Is it possible, bit by bit, you understand? Little by little. That may take me for the rest of my life. I may be free of it just as I'm dying. That's not very, uh, very amusing. It has no meaning. So I ask, is it possible to be aware without any prejudice, without any choice, just be aware of my condition? And then is it possible not allowing time as a factor to dissolve this conditioning, not allowing time, you understand? I might make my time being, I will do it gradually. So, is it possible to look at this conditioning without the 
Time element at all. This is not something cranky, fadistic, something, some new fad, something you have to uh, accept. But you can see, uh, reason points this out. Reason says you are conditioned, and reason points out that if you take time over it, many years, you have other forms of condition going on, right? So there is only one fact, one act that must absolutely dissolve the totality of the conditioning. I'm putting this question to you. Look at it first. Don't say is it possible? It's not possible. And brush it aside. I am born as a Protestant or a Catholic, or I have a particular condition with regard to nationalism, or I am conditioned to the pursuit of only pleasure at any price, which is what is happening in this country. Entertainment. Now, can I, not allowing time, which is a, which is asking a tremendous question, you understand? Because our brain, which has evolved through time, right, through millions and millions of years, we have come to this point, which is a very, which is a great tragedy. Because we look at ourselves, and the brain is evolved in time, and we are asking something. We are demanding the brain to act totally differently. You am, am I, are we following each other? This. Which is reasonable. You understand? The question may be unreasonable. You understand? The question being not to allow time. That may be unreasonable. But we see if we allow time, there's other forms of factors entering which will also condition. So the mind can never be free from conditioning if I allowed if the mind allows time to interfere with the dissolution, dissolution of conditioning. Is this clear? Huh? So I must be apt, the brain must understand this, that it has evolved through time and is being challenged, is being, is a crisis being brought to it, and say you must solve it, you must be free of time. And that says that's impossible. That's your natural reaction, isn't it? Can go on from that. I can go on, but I you understand. See what what takes place when there is the future is now. I wonder if you see that. The future is time, isn't it? Tomorrow is time. And if there is no tomorrow, I have to act so completely now. Or invite the future now. So 
so that the brain has to face this fact that though it has been trained, educated, conditioned, shaped in the process of time, and now it is facing a challenge which says, think or act totally differently, which is not of time. You know, I wonder if you see all this. Are we asking this too much? I mean, what do you say? So that is the real question. The philosophers and the psychologists and others have said, accept human condition, modify it, give time, so that it becomes more and more cultured through knowledge, and knowledge becomes all important. Knowledge is, it is time, because knowledge means accumulation, which means time. I don't know if you follow this. And we accept all this, because it's very convenient, very natural, apparently very natural. And also it's very convenient, comforting, that have many, some years and so on and so on. Now, when the brain is challenged that it is not through time that the condition can be dissolved, then it says it's impossible and it's stuck there. That's what's happening to you now. I don't know if you observe, if you are aware of the fact. Right? Can we go on from there a little bit? I can, the speaker can go on verbally, explain, but there's no value, unless you yourself actually perceive it, see the truth of, of this fact that if you allow time, and time is not a factor that can dissolve or uncondition the mind, as when the mind is conditioned the consequences are what we live with, our struggle, conflict, misery, all the rest of it, which is part of our condition. So can the brain be free of, able to look at this problem, this challenge, without any fear, without any choice, face it. Then the, the brain becomes extremely active, doesn't it? I wonder if you notice it. You have, you have broken the broken the tradition. And then, when I ask. What is freedom then? You understand? The freedom that we have accept, we have taken for granted to do what we like to do, that's what we call freedom. Right? Especially in this country. We're all free to do what we like. And immediately, if possible. Well, the consequence of that, you know what it is. That's not freedom, obviously. So freedom then means the brain being free of the conditioning and is incapable of thinking in terms of time. Just going to slowly. 
I need time to learn how to drive a car. I need time to learn a language. A month, six weeks or three months. I need time to learn any skill. There I need time. But I discovered that time, psychologically, is not necessary. No. The time has conditioned us, right? And to and the question of time. Both the physical as well as psychological time. The physical time is necessary to go from here to where one lives. But time as the future of me getting better and better and better, me trying to become somebody psychologically, is it a fact? Or it is an illusion which thought has created. I'll be. I am not happy, but I will be happy. Heaven is in that hole, and ultimately I'll go there. All the evangelistic promises, you know, that's going on in this country. So, can the brain be free of conditioning as time? You understand my question? And the philosophers and the psychologists say that's impossible. And they are being specialists, being <coughs> having written books, published, and selling, they become famous and we laymen accept it. We accept the specialists. Right? That's one of our conditioning. So when you look at all this. sensitively aware of what the others are saying, and sensitively aware of one's own conditioning, and seeing that time is a factor that really shapes the brain to, con- to, to a particular condition. It has taken two thousand years for Christians to accept all that. Tremendous propaganda which is going on now. And the Hindus with their propaganda of 3,000, 4,000 years. It has taken time. The constant repetition. Jesus is the Saviour. They have their own pattern in India, in Japan, in China. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Obviously, brain becomes atrophied. And probably that's what is happening to humankind. Right? Sorry, but it's taken so long about one question. You speak sometime, sometimes of the brain and also of the mind. Is there a difference between, and if so, what is the, their relationship? You sometimes speak of the brain and also of the mind. Is there a difference between them? And if so, what is their relationship?
How would you answer this question? So you're all, you are learning apparently from me. Please don't. Don't please learn from another, especially in the psychological, spiritual, so called spiritual matters. You have to be a light to yourself, and that light cannot be lit by any other. So I'm not I'm not teaching with speaker is not teaching. We are observing our own minds and our own hearts, our own existence, our daily life as we live it. So the question says, what is the difference between the mind and the brain? What is the relationship between the two? Is there something separate as the mind? apart from the brain, or there is only the brain which has created the mind and then tries to establish a relationship between the two, which is a game it can play everlastingly. You follow on that? Right? That is, the brain realises its limitation because it's conditioned, everlastingly in conflict and all the rest. So the brain, thought is the instrument of the brain, so it invents a mind, super mind, right? Superconsciousness, and then tries to establish a relationship between the two. I don't know if you are following the game it plays. So we are asking, is there a mind which is not brought about by thought as an as a comforting idea apart from the brain? You are following all this? Most of us, I'm afraid, are so emotional. We are and react react so quickly that we we don't use reason. Somehow reason seems to be wrong. So we are first we are we are understanding what reason, the limitation of reason first. And see if we can't go beyond it. I wonder, right? Does one see the limitation of reason? However reasonable it is, it's limited, obviously. First, so we must exercise reason, sanity. Not just be emotional about any matter. So, there is the brain, which is conditioned, whose instrument is thought. Thought is brought about through various sensations, experiences, knowledge, memory, thought, action. That is the chain the brain lives with, or lives in that chain, within that area. And knowledge can never be complete. Knowledge must always go with ignorance. Always. There is no complete knowledge about anything. So man realizes this, but so and projects an idea of God. So God is omnipotent, you know the rest of it. I wonder if you are following what this. So Is there a mind apart from the brain? And is the brain infinite?
brain is infinite if it is free from all conditioning. Obviously. Am I? Am I merely spinning a lot of words? Are we following each other? Are we expect doing it for yourself? As long as the brain is conditioned in any shape or any at any level, at any depth, it must be limited. And when that <coughs> when that limitation, restriction, confinement, condition is totally eliminated. Disappears completely, then the brain is infinite. Next, this is reason, isn't it? I wonder if you're following all this. So, The capacity to perceive wholly, holistic perception, is not possible if the brain is limited, right? If the lay brain is prejudiced. Wait, all right, let's put it much more simply. If you are prejudiced, Your thinking is always limited, right? And this prejudice is the result of one's conditioning, right? And that conditioning limits the capacity of the brain. If I am a surgeon for the rest of my life, I've spent ten years in the world of medicine, surgery, and I've specialized in that. Right? My brain is limited. It cannot have a, a holistic perception. Even the scientists who talk about holistic perception. If they are conditioned, which is fear, nationality, jealousy, and all the rest of it, as most of them are, their brain is limited, right? And therefore, they are incapable of, perce- of holistic perception, though they though they write about it. You understand? So, the holistic perception is possible only when there is total elimination of conditioning. And man said that's not possible. You, you follow? Somebody comes along and says it is possible if you go very carefully, step by step. You understand? Understand it very deeply. So the mind. This will come rather difficult. The brain, as it is now, is limited by its own conditioning, by its own desire to be completely safe, secure in relationship, in job, you know, secure. Because it feels it can function only when there is complete security. Right. That is, if I'm comp- if I'm a first-class surgeon, and I'm secure in that, the brain functions happily. You understand what I'm talking? Of course, this reason. So the brain is limited in its action. 
And is there, is it possible to perceive something holistically apart from the brain? You understand this becomes wrong. No, 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 let, no, sir. This is a little more complex. Than that. Have you ever perceived anything wholly? Please investigate a little bit. To perceive something wholly is to not be not let the word, the image, the symbol interfere with perception. Right? Begin let's begin with that. Can we look at a tree that without calling it a tree? Right? We can. Because the word tree is not that. We have used the word tree to symbolize or to to put to use the word tree to communicate a certain object. But and so our brain is conditioned by words. I wonder right? But not and so can one be free of the word to look. See this show? That's fairly easy to look at that without the word. That's fairly easy. But to look at ourselves without the word is much more complex. Because we live by words. I'm an American, I'm a Catholic, I'm a word. And the content of that word. The word by itself it means nothing, but thought has given the content to that word. I wonder if all this. So to perceive something holistically, that is to perceive without time, is to have a mind that's global. To see humanity as a whole Not I am identified with humanity, which is silly, but to see the hu- humanity with all its struggle, pain, anxiety, misery, joy, pleasure, the travail that human beings go through as, as a human whole. I think that's part of the mind. The holistic perception is the mind. I won't go much more deep, that's enough for the moment. So the relationship between the mind and the brain can only take place when the brain is equally infinite, which is when it's free from its conditioning. I have been deeply hurt in childhood. In spite of trying to understand what happened, that hurt remains, what do I do? I have been deeply hurt in childhood. In spite of trying to understand what happened, in spite of uh, trying to understand what happened, 
that hurt remains, what am I to do? Are you asking me what to do? Or rather, let's find out what to do. Together. Most people, from their childhood, even now as they grow up and mature and old age, they get hurt. You all must be hurt, aren't you all hurt? Some are aware of their hurt, others are not. What is it that's hurt? What is the consequences of that hurt? And whether it is possible not to be hurt at all, at any time? when one is hurt, is it possible to be so free of that hurt and discover never to be hurt at all? You understand? The Are we all working together, or am I working or just listening? I hope not, because there's no fun in that. So. Together, let's examine these three things. What is it that's hurt? And what consequences of that hurt? And if one is aware of that hurt, what is one to do? And do we see the consequences of the hurt? First, what is it that's hurt? When I say to myself, I am hurt. It happens in childhood, harsh word, a gesture, a cruel look. And this modern world, as you must know, thousands and thousands are leaving, children are leaving their home, running away, becoming prostitutes. Because at home they are beaten, ill-treated, scolded, you follow? The misery of all that, that's all deeply hurt. And in school, they are hurt because they are being compared with somebody who is clever, more, better marks, better examining, better position. You follow? First class examination, you don't pass as well as the other, you're hurt. So this process of hurt goes on right through life, not just in childhood. When you get married, your wife says something to hurt you, or you say something to her, it hurts you. So life becomes a process of deep hurt. See the tragedy of all this, what we are doing to ourselves. God. And the consequence of that hurt is that we build a wall around ourselves never to be hurt more, so get frightened, withdraw, isolated, and from that isolation act, 
becomes more and more neurotic. Under all the people who are trying to help you not to be neurotic, and so on. So, what is one to do? From childhood, you are hurt. The parents are busy, irritated, tired, bad relationship between them. They want to fulfil in sex or this or the some kind of rot that goes on in their relationship, and they take it out their children. You've seen all this. The foreman scolds the worker, and he, so. On. Now, what is it that is hurt? Please, let us reason together. Um, the speaker is not the Delphic Oracle. There is no Delphic Oracle, even, the ch- even though the Church talks about it. So let us reason together. What is it that is hurt? There is the physical hurt, disease, accident, maim, and so on. That's one thing. That can be met if the brain is intact naturally, then the for thought not to identify with that particular pain and Keep on with that pain. You can deal with that fairly easily. But psychologically, inwardly, we are hurt. And we are asking, what is it that is hurt? You are all hurt. And is it an image that you have built about yourself that's hurt? Because each one of us has an image about oneself, right? That's a fact. That you're clever, not clever, that you're beautiful, not beautiful, that you must be this and you must not be that. You're gradually through time, through uh, from childhood, we built this up. That you are American, that you must behave this way, or you are free. You follow. You have a certain image about yourself, and when that image is questioned, is trodden upon, put a pin into it, that image gets hurt, right? I mean, we are reasoning. You are not accepting what I'm say, what the speaker is saying. And so, as long as you have that image, you are going to be hurt. Now, from childhood, please, this is real education, if you are interested. From childhood, not to create that image. It's real education. And now, the question is, I see I am hurt. I know the origin of that hurt. Somebody said something. I was beaten, or I was uh, insulted, I was all kinds of things. So the image gets hurt. The image is me. Me, we have built up. I am beautiful, I am right, I am wrong, I am I must become something. 
I must become successful, I must fulfill, I must... You follow? That's the image I have about myself. And as long as I have that image, you, somebody, is going to put a pin into it. And I get hurt. What if someone leaves you that you love? What's that? What if it's not just your ego getting pricked? What if it's your heart? Isn't there more to it than that? As long as I have an image about myself, there is not holistic perception or love. Obviously. This is not the moment to go into it. We are dealing with hurt. And can one be aware of that hurt sensitively? Not say I must not be hurt. Be aware of it. And see and find out for oneself if it is possible not to have an image about oneself at all. If I have an image about myself, I'll be dependent on you. Comparing myself with a larger or people who have tremendous audience, you follow? Somebody calling me a fool because you, th- you think you are a great man, or this or that, so I'll. If there is the. Always the the feeling that I'm going to be hurt, and as long as I have that image, I am going to be hurt. Now, can I live in daily life? Please listen. In daily life, without a single image. Again, the brain has been used to this fact of having an image. Myself, how I look, how I don't look, how am I beautiful? The image. Society, education, the priests, the psychologists, the philosophers have built in me as my image. My knowledge, which is my image. So, Is it possible to live without single image? I explain that, sir. Knowledge has certain value at certain places. Carpenter must have a knowledge. If you have, uh, if you want to drive a car, you must have knowledge. But when it is knowledge becomes psychological, as the image which I've built, this thought has built, that knowledge becomes the means of getting hurt. Obviously, simple. To live without an image that means can you see your image and observe it without any choice, be aware of it, look at it, give all your attention to it. And find out for yourself whether it is possible to live without a single image whatsoever. The speaker says it is possible, but don't accept what the speaker says, find out. 